Okay, so right now I'm going to explain to you all exactly how we use System23, not only in the live trading chamber, but in daily trading and even in today's trading. Um, this morning. So the system 23, like I said, is a semi-automated system. By this I mean is what I mean by this is basically we open the man. The first position is opened by us. Uh, and the second position, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, are all open by our trade management system. So we make the analysis and basically the the system begins trading. So right now the inputs that I'm using here. Um, our basic technical factors. This is another account. We, we what we do here is we like to show people exactly how uh, how to trade, like seriously teaching them. So this is this is an account that we opened on the fifth of October. Uh, we invested seven hundred and fifty dollars into it, and by using the system, by using the system, beginning with the smallest possible risk, which is zero point zero five risk per trade. Maximum trades open at a given time four. I'm going to explain this a bit better, but let's do it by a timeline. So here we go. Position IDs. So you see, we started trading this account on the sixth. The account was deposited on on fifth of October, and here's here's how we did it. So the first trade was a negative trade, 0.5% risk on gold. We went buy, that wasn't good enough. We then took sell GBP JPY and GBP uh, USD. So here's the, the closing time and here's the quantity of the trades. The first trade, as always, that we open is 0 0.01. We then use the law of compounding. Together with many other little, um, let's say, gadgets or you know, skills that we have to compound these trades and keep keep gaining pips. So, for example, GBP crashed yesterday. That's also not something very random. This big drop over here is not the most random thing in the world because if we go here, we clearly see a breakout of a triple of a triple bottom. There it is, a clear, clear, strong breakout of a triple, well, let's say a double and a triple bottom that didn't actually go through. Total breakout, price just took it, took it down. We have the same thing on GB, Euro GBP, a trend, a trend channel breakout. <clears throat> Speaking technically, let's say. Uh, now we can sit here and speculate all we want, whether it's some fat finger algorithms and blah, 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 but I, I really don't think it's any kind of algorithms. I, I just think it's normal technical factors, and perhaps yes, algorithms did see this this move and started taking the trades. So I'm going to just show you what we did very quickly. We took sell just two positions. That means our overall risk at any given time were the first two trades, which is GBP JPY and GBP USD. They were both 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So the trades are this one. You see here, they're the only ones that got charged swap because they were open prior. Prior to to the open, uh, prior to basically the time time passing the swap swap clock. Um, so yeah, 0 0.01, and then we compounded. As price kept going down, we kept compounding, and we made we made a return of 448 dollars with the maximum risk of uh, those those two percent of one percent. Sorry. Um, now the reason the drawdown is showing five is because when we started opening the trades. The last trades were the 0 0.6 for GBP USD and 0 0.4. You just find that it's going to be with the pips because there, this, this, okay, this here, oh God, here we go. Okay, here. This one, no, this one here, and this one here, these two. These two trades made that drawdown look bigger because as price. Uh, the, the stop losses were moved into profit and they were all the same place, but um, the closing times, as you see, are quite different. So the price didn't, um, the trades didn't close at the same time, rather the, the big ones started closing first, like this one here, you see this is $40, this one closed first. Then you have this one here, and this made the drawdown seem in reality bigger, but it's not, because look, um, there was actually a lot of slippage as well last night, so, so uh, we were actually up 100% yesterday, but 
we have to get we have to just settle for uh, 80 something yeah 80, 84 I think 84 percent so we were up hundred percent at one one time here um, right now I'm gonna analyze everything else and just go over a couple of trades that we have open and these day, this, this are they you're gonna see the slide if 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 we're correct which we were for many times this year with the NFPs we see weakness coming from the dollar on this NFP we see the channel continuing um, that means euro USD heading higher possibly to 112 113 area before relaxing and settling settling downwards and heading towards uh, the 111 oh, let's say 112 in that range 113 111 range so to stay here till about November and then to rock and roll upwards we see euro usd heading much higher towards the 120 area in the short run a uh, medium run sorry in the short run we see it range so we are basically buy gold uh, this position is with a stop loss over here uh, 0 0.01 they're all 0 0.01 and our algorithm this is it here s23n our algorithm basically manages our trades for us so once we go buy that system at a specific time, for example, in Euro USD, once we go 30 pips in profit, it will open a second position, and that second position will compound into a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. That means the more positions we open, the more money we're going to make. I see a lot of new people in this session. Um, do any of you have any questions for me? What, I, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to explain the system. Do you have any questions for me? Okay, I see no questions, so I'm going to go ahead and explain the system right now. Okay, so the system is pretty simple, yet at the same time quite complex. Uh, it took a long time to create. It's revolved heavily around risk management and the idea that if we don't open a trade, we can't make any money, and if we lose all of our money, we can't open any more trades. So the idea is to protect the capital as much as we can, lowering the risk as much as possible, and basically stretching out the reward and maximizing it to the fullest. Well, most people would say that's impossible because um, for X, Y, Z reasons. Now, if price goes down and my stop loss gets hit, which is at around 80 pips from, from my take profit, I have no take, sorry, from my entry price. I trade with zero, no, no take profit whatsoever. So no take profit. The stop loss acts as a take profit. Let's say price heads up into my favor. Best case scenario. What happens is a second position is open here, preferably 0 0.01, so we go lower. Once price keeps going a bit higher, a third position is open, same size as my trade. In the meantime, every time a position is open, the stop loss of this trade goes into profit exactly where the stop loss of the second trade is at. Third trade opens, two stop losses move into profit, one is added in the same place. Four trade is open, three take profits go into a profit and so forth. So basically, compound it. Now, how do you successfully compound? Most people would, uh, let's say, Martin Gaylet or something like this. I just showed you proof that you can make money with taking tiny little risks and you could actually grab some decent rewards. Even though this is $750, $488 is still a good reward. Even though, even though the, uh, the equity of this account actually went much higher than where we finished. We were at, we were at about $800 in plus but there was a lot of slippage when price came back down. Not only slippage, there was also, um, well, basically, our st the way we trade here is we were satisfied with gaining our, our, our profits, you know. We were five trades in. So we had on GBP USD, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven trades. Seven trades on GBP USD and about seven trades on GBP JPY. That idea is that the more we compound, the more trades we open, the more, the more we're going to make, obviously, right? So, once the second trade is open, the idea and the system should be used like this. Once you open the second trade, you now trade with zero risk. What I mean by this is, and I'm just going to put, I'm just going to do this. 
Uh, I'm going to put pending orders just to show you. Let's say we buy here. The first thing we do after opening a trade is add a stop loss with 0.5% risk and or less and uh, to a level that if reached we would be proven wrong. Second trade is open. No pending orders, real active live trade. Second trade is open. Once the second trade opens, the stop loss is added. This stop loss now moves into profit. Okay? So the idea is this. If this one loses, it's going to lose 2.2 And if this one wins, it's going to make $6.50. You understand? So if the third trade is now open and that trade goes to 0 0.02 back to the original buying price, the stop loss of this trade is now moved into profit. The stop loss of this trade is added. And the stop loss of this trade is also moved into profit. And then you keep doing that, keep doing that. Obviously, you can't do it so um, in such close distances. And the best way to use this is in, in rapid market moves, such as yesterday, uh, in breakouts, changes in trends, trends, things like this. So you need to be very good at actually managing trades, not just executing them. Um, the law of average states that we, at Pips Matter, win usually about 8 out of 10 trades. But it, we don't even have to do that because using the, the, the basically the, the, the strategy that we use is basically we open four trades at the maximum of risking 2% of our account and opening four trades in four different and not usually correlated markets. But also at chain, let's say, uh, trend channels, um, changes in trends, breakouts, and all of these things. So yesterday we noticed the breakout in these pairs. We obviously didn't want to take a very big risk because it could have been a fake out. So once price broke, we sold. And you can clearly see it here. Here's the first position. No other position was open until price moves. Third, second position, third position, fourth position, fifth, and here's the slippage. So we should have actually had more trades here. And you see price actually kept going down but we got stopped out here. And I can show you the same thing on GBP USD. One trade is open the day before, right here. And then the rest fall. Obviously, price went even more down. I mean, we could have easily made a good two, three hundred percent yesterday. If if positions kept opening downwards and Obviously, if we were there, this happened at around 2 a.m. our time. We weren't really active. So, but yeah, anyway, I mean, 82% 80, in a day is always, it's always great. So we're coming into the last 15 minutes of this uh, you know, before the NFP starts. Um, does anybody have any questions about the trading strategy? Anyway, this, this NFP uh, looks to be a pretty volatile one. There are many reasons why I'm stating that it will be volatile, but mainly it is because um, the ISM was pretty strong this week. Uh, the NFP has been weak last month after it came from a strong summer, but a very weak spring. Now, if the NFP is negative today, I also think that the unemployment rate might actually uh, go back to 5%. So if the employment rate goes back to 5% and we have a weak NFP, you'll definitely see uh, Euro USD go a good 200 pips, let's say from here to about, yeah, somewhere there. So I'm going to mark this on the map right around somewhere here and I'm going to make it dotted. So that's negative NFP and positive NFP will bring it down to 110, but it's going to be ranged. So it's going to go up and then down or down and then back up because it's not so decisive yet. Next month, November, that's a big cracker, and December is, <laughs> is the, the main one. Uh, I still believe that there will not be a rate hike this year from the US, especially with the elections uh, coming up. They're going to cause a lot of uncertainty in the markets, and uh, most likely, if Trump is president, 
then I can guarantee you that you, you, the dollar is going to be extremely weak. So, we're waiting for the NFP. What I'm going to do right now is just going to, I'm just going to prepare for a couple of things. Just stay tuned for about three minutes and I'll, I'll be right back. If you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me about risk management, about anything. Right now, I'm not speaking too much. I'm not showing you any pretty things. I'm more focused on making uh, money. So if you have questions, please just write them down and I'll answer them as soon as possible. I'll be right back. Uh, on the 26th of September, we had the first presidential debate. On 4th of October, three days ago, we had the vice, vice presidential debate. The second, and I believe extremely important, presidential debate will be held on 9th of October. And then 10 days after that is the third and final presidential debate right on um, October 19th. 8th of November is obviously election day and January 20th, 2017 is basically when the new president and vice president take seats at the White House. So November is going to be really volatile, especially late, late October, early November. Um, the gap, you guys have to know that the gap has closed up again. Clinton seemed like the main winner. The gap widened and right now the gap is closing yet again. I think, uh, this is what I just think and believe, is that Clinton wins the first presidential debate. Media goes wild, tells you Clinton is the winner. The markets think Clinton's the winner, dollar gains, gold weakens. Second presidential debate, um, well, this is the second one, and I believe that uh, Trump might do something good. Euro USD heads higher, gold goes back up. Then third and final presidential debate, Clinton wins and the whole world says Clinton's the winner and the media starts the story first. Um, yeah, um, Clinton doesn't win, Trump wins, dollar crashes, gold goes crazy, markets go wild. That's one scenario. Yeah, I just want you to remember that markets are set to focus on opinion polls a lot and on the odds of the outcome. So you need to pay attention to this regardless of what you're trading. Really, the, this presidential debate is very important. The markets are set to focus on opinion polls and odds on the outcome being offered by bookmakers. But you need to be careful. They may send false signals. Okay? Really, pay attention. They actually may send false signals. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot of things happening in the markets right now. So uh, we're down to the last nine minutes. What I told you is what we're waiting for is basically for the dollar to weaken. That's what we believe. We believe the NFP will come out weaker, or 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 the best case scenario is is that um, that employment rate goes to five or five point one percent. And NFP comes out at about 110 or 210. But that's a wild, wild and long shot. So just make sure you're taking small and calculated risks. There is lots of slippage at these kind of times. So even a stop loss of 80 pips might actually close out at 120 pips. So yeah, basically just be careful. Um, regardless of what happens here, we are taking a maximum risk of about 4%. So I mean, it's, it's not much. The idea is on NFP is to basically try to earn before the NFP, like we did this morning. You earn before the NFP and you risk profits in these kind of scenarios that one might say even that they're gambling, you know, because nobody can really tell you what's exactly going to happen right now. It might continue trending or it might actually break out to the downside. So I'll be back when it's two minutes, three minutes before the NFP, before the numbers. So in about 
four to five minutes, my voice will be heard again on your speakers. I am back. Um, okay, so uh, looking into things a little bit more, I do believe that that Euro USD will head higher. So I, I like I said from the beginning, I do believe that we will have a weaker than expected, which normally that's how the NFP acts because the numbers aren't usually right there correctly, um, where the market experts quote they'll come out. Um, okay, so yes, like I said, we believe uh, a stronger NFP. Well, weaker NFP than expected, that means uh, weaker dollar. I can see uh, uh, the Canadian dollar gaining a bit of strength as well. It has been very negative this morning, um, this day. And we are right, well, we're right almost there for the NFP. So let's just wait and see what's going to happen. We're about 45 seconds away from the news. We've had buy positions, like I said, versus the dollar. And... Uh, even if that doesn't work out, I'm sure everything will be fine. So, let's see. Uh, do, does anybody have any positions? Is anybody trading? I know Kai Wei is following our, our account. And Euro USD, it's negative. Like I said, non fund payrolls negative, unemployment rate up. Yep. So, as you see, we're compounding the trades. Trades are opening upwards. Everything's going correctly. So, yeah. Uh, it seems like there's a bit of a delay in the, in the rise in the dollar. Well, in the, in the weakness of the dollar. But the prediction was correct for the unemployment rate. I guess this will take a bit of time to kick in. I believe that even if I believe that price will head a bit down and then head uh, higher later in the day. So you see this uh, 18 plus pips here, and yep. So yeah, I'll explain this a bit later. I'm just kind of <laughs> focused on the markets right now, waiting to see what's what's exactly going to happen. Did anybody trade anything? Is anybody trading? Does do any of you have any open positions right now? Okay, well, we're correct on the data. Uh, I think it will take a little bit of more time to for 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 the actual kick to happen with price. So I think it's it's gonna happen a bit later on throughout the day because the, the the news is well pretty negative. So unemployment rate went up five percent. Uh, Non-farm payrolls came out even worse than last month. Average hourly earnings came out pretty much the same. Unemployment in Canada came out better. Like I said, we did expect for for the Canadian dollar to, to gain a little bit more strength. 
because it was very weak. I was literally speaking about it right when, when it happened and price did go down. The dollar seems to be holding on to a bit of strength, but I'm sure it's going to lose that strength later on in the day. We don't have anything else major coming out from the US. We do have Fisher, Stanley Fisher speaking. But average hourly earnings 0 0.2. I mean nothing special. This is pretty pretty bad news for the for the US dollar. Okay, so we move into our Bullish Euro USD stance again, and we'll take it from there. So, like I said, we believe that the dollar will continue to be weak. Uh, we were once again correct on the unemployment, well, basically on the NFP uh, figures. They are pretty negative. I still don't see the dollar gaining strength throughout the day, and definitely next week it's going to be very weak. So, if you are trading it, watch out for. Uh, <clears throat> Basically, watch out for um, how can I say this? For abnormal, abnormal is the best word I can say. Watch out for abnormal market movement. So, if I'm, uh, what I mean by that is, if price continues heading downward, it will spike up later on in the day. So, watch out. Well, at least. We are again 100% correct on the NFP. That means we continue keeping the 2016 track record at a pretty amazing 116, uh, 100, 100%. Um, I think that there will be plenty of volatility next week. Maybe, just maybe, there is not enough market movement right now because of those crazy things that happen in the morning with the British pound. So, like I said, watch out for abnormal market movement. Keep your either stop losses um, large or don't open any positions whatsoever and wait for next week. Uh, I believe already from today I can see uh, Monday, Tuesday being negative for the USD. But we'll release a video explaining everything what we believe will happen throughout next week. And uh, like I said, we're buying Euro USD right now. We're buying gold, pretty much going against the dollar, till early next week. But, like I said, we're going to explain this a bit better in Sunday's video. Thank you all for coming. There is not much happening right now, and I, I really can't sit here and wait for something to happen. Um, do have your alerts on. Wait, definitely today, tomorrow. Um, actually, today or Monday, the dollar will lose plenty of strength. Thank you for coming. You day. can get yeah. it if you really sure. want You can Bye get now. it if you really want You can get it if you really want But you must try Try and try Try and try You'll succeed at last